Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Emily Wong. This is my first video and in today's video I will be speaking to you about the good things and the bad things that you can expect when you move into a UCT res. So personally I have lived in res for my first year and um, it was also corona year. So in 2020 I was in first year at Baxter Hall. So as you can see from this video, I didn't have a roommate, uh, but my bed was very, very small and I didn't like that about res at all. I didn't have a full res experience because, um, Corona. In second year, I decided that I was going to move into private and then now in third year, I am also in private accommodation. So the first thing that I want to address is the stigma that res is for underprivileged kids. Girl, what? 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 Anyways, so then, um, I don't know why people think that. When I lived in Res in 2020, I met people from all over the place. Like, I met people who went to private schools, like those expensive, expensive private schools. I also met people who just went to like an ordinary government school. I met people who are from like all over South Africa. People from Zim, people from Uganda, people from Nigeria. Like, everyone is in Res. It's not a class type of situation. It's not like poor people stay in res and rich people stay in private accommodation. Let's talk about the good things about res first. Obviously the first thing is definitely the social aspect. When you get to res, you're in first year, you don't know anyone here. There are thousands of people here. It's not guaranteed that you brought people from high school with you or maybe this is a new country for you. Like the res basically set up social activities and social gatherings and they make platforms available for you to make friends. I know our brother hostel. Yeah. yeah. Our brother hostel. So yeah guys. Yeah. Woo! The kids are hungry. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know about you but I really like to make friends. I don't want to be a loner like but if you're a loner that's also cool. I love you. There's a good supporting structure at Res as well. Like they make sure that they they really care about you and they want to make sure that you're settled in. You know, oh my gosh, let me check up on you. They kind of make sure that you get to know your neighbors, you get to know people who live upstairs, who live downstairs. So the second thing that's good about res is that you don't have to make your own food. Like every single day, you're sorted. Because um, I come from boarding school. So in boarding school, there was a set time. That's the thing about res that's kind of nicer is that they open up a slot. So when I was in first year, their slots were something like at seven o'clock, they would open up for breakfast and then you can eat until nine or half past nine. And then they basically give you like a two hour leeway every single time so that, you know, you can be late, you can take long to eat and whatnot, whatnot. Also guys, a lot of people complain about the UCT food and, you know, res food apparently is just the pits. For like the two months that I was there, like I didn't get any food that was like i was just like oh my gosh what is this like because people were getting like raw chicken or something last year it was just really bad in 2021 but in 2020 when i was there i was like oh my gosh there's like six different types of cereal that you can choose from there's like two menu options you can either have fried eggs and sausages or you can have like a savory muffin like i kind of liked it i kind of liked it and it's also because I just love food in general. So I didn't really, I'm not a picky eater. But people have complained about the food and yeah. There's always salads at every meal. You can choose between water and juice. And then on a good day, you get like a cute little dessert type of, you know, malva pudding type of situation. And also you didn't have to worry about dishes. You just, you know, you eat. You can't, you show up, you show your phone, your little meal voucher situation. And then they just, you know, give you food. And then you eat and then you leave. And then also now when you're eating with people, you also can't sit alone. It's like, you know, those American schools where you're like, oh my gosh, I don't know where to sit. Like it's low key those vibes. Yeah, it's low key those vibes. It was very tense for me because I didn't make friends in the beginning. And then it's like, oh my gosh, I'm sitting next to strangers and these people are already friends. And then now I'm like, hi guys, can I sit? <laughs> so a subcategory of that is um food vouchers. I thought that was pretty cool. That basically what they're doing is that you can choose, they give you an option. You can either eat in res and like you already at school and then you go back to res and eat lunch or you just eat on campus so it's like a 32 rand 33 rand food voucher that they give to you and then you can choose to buy something on campus like a little burger and chips combo this is what the students get from res so then they kind of have like these combos like cool drink and sandwich 
32 rand cool drink and you know chips like they they try to cater for you and also now it's like you can save it up and i know people will save up their food vouchers and then they buy like snacks at the end of the month because they expire monthly the third thing about res that's very very nice is that it's close to the bus stop so at uct um we have bus services people call them jammies but now i see they've changed the stickers and now they're called uct shuttle basically i think uct is very different in the sense that school is here everyone else lives here whereas i think with other campuses it's like it's like a big complex and then everyone just like you can walk to campus so it doesn't work like that in cape town because we're kind of in the city like we blend in with the city like the the resas are like all over like cape town and then there's the main campus like all the resas are close to a jammy stop which means that it's easy for you to get to campus because all the jammies all the uct shuttle bus things go to campus and they go to your res and there's a schedule that you have to stick to but you know it's better than walking it's better than ubering and yeah and also that means that you don't have to get a car you don't have to get a car in cape town but that's something we'll talk about later the fourth thing and the final advantage of being in res is that in res they give you little cute little spaces to study like labs what are labs like labs are basically a room full of computers and then they call it labs and then you can study in the labs you can study in their dedicated little study space little study rooms and it's cute i mean i like to i like to study around people who are also studying and um yeah that was very nice that's why i like studying at the library but then the library also has a lot of studying spaces but if you're in res you don't always have to go to the library to study with people who are studying so in the beginning of the year they basically plan how they're going to spend their money and Baxter Hall really plugged us in the beginning of the year because they basically organized for the red bus to take us to Signal Hill and that's something that you have to do when you get to Cape Town because it's like oh my gosh sunset oh my gosh Cape Town oh my gosh you know views so Baxter organized that for us and I was really grateful because I wasn't gonna do it myself especially in the beginning because you know you don't really have friends yet they also took us to Century City I think it's called Grand West Casino. So basically they took us to Grand West and then they took us ice skating and it was very cute. Like a lot of touristy stuff. And you know, as a student in Cape Town, you must do these touristy things. So I was really grateful that Baxter did that for us. They also do other things like Zumba lessons on a Saturday. And then they're like, one, two, yeah, that's right. see ya. Okay guys, now let's talk about the bad things about res, the disadvantages. I know for a lot of people who stayed at home during high school is that it's really hard for them to share bathrooms with people. It'll be like the six of you sharing like two bathrooms. Actually, that was a situation in Baxter, yeah. So there were like six of us who shared two bathrooms. So there was also a shower and a toilet in there. And um, I didn't mind it. Um, the shower was cute. There was always good water pressure. There was always hot water. Yeah, but the situation is that sometimes you have to wait. You can't shower whenever you want to because someone else is showering. And also, if you're living with inconsiderate people and you're like, oh my gosh, there's hair in the drain. But then you also don't know whose hair it is. It's, it's kind of awkward. Uh, if you're unlucky and get people who don't want to clean up after themselves, then I'm sorry. But they also, like the cleaners, they they keep it quite clean i think they clean it like every day it was quite clean I, I didn't experience anything bad but other people have told me really bad things about their showers and stuff okay and then guys the one thing that i hated in first year was the forced participation so like i said remember i said they did very cute things for us like um taking us to nice things but they also did not very cute things like talent shows guys i just yeah because because i come from hostel like these are the type of things that we did or when we didn't have money like <laughs> i mean it's very cute and you get to know people and then it's like oh my gosh emily you can sing so well no. oh my gosh emily i didn't know you can sing and dance and be pretty all at the same time but the thing is that they used to do these type of things on a Saturday night. On a Saturday night. On a Saturday night. <laughs> what is 
You know, you used to be the leaders of the school, you know? You were there cheerleading, you know, when you're a cheerleader and then you tell people, you're like, can I get a boomer chicka boom? You know, those vibes. And you were, you were the people leading them. For me, it's not like I was a cheerleader per se, but it's like, I just didn't like the fact that I was forced to become, like, to do this whole cheer spirit, spirit cup cheerleading situation because it's not like you had inter house, whatnot, whatnot, which would also kill me, by the way. I'm not trying to do these. Boomer chicka boom, boomer chicka boom. Um, in the beginning, they were teaching us war cries about, you know, B A X D R Baxter B A. Let me put on my. So yeah, guys, we're not trying to do those sing songs. And I remember people were just not having it. People were like. Yeah. Now another thing about res is that the walls are kind of thin-ish so um i am someone i didn't really like to play my music out loud because it's kind of inconsiderate even if you just because the walls are kind of thin and you if your windows are open your neighbors are going to hear your music and now especially if your neighbors have like bad taste in music you're going to be hearing like you know like you're just going to hear music that you don't want to hear the whole day sometimes so the last thing that we need to speak about are fire drills. So this is like a bonus thing that you just don't know about. I never knew that fire drills could be taken so seriously until I got to UCT. I mean, it's good that they're taken seriously because you know, in primary school, they were never taken seriously. In high school, they were never taken seriously. These were very random and they were always in the middle of the night. They were always at 3 a.m., 2 a.m., in the middle of the night. So basically the alarm goes off and then they do roll call on the grass basically and then you just have to be there otherwise you get a black dot yeah i know like a black dot Let's see. 